After months of researching the current game market, the results have concluded that I'm overdue to make an impossible rage-inducing climbing game. After picking and choosing elements from my favorites, I came up with an idea. The game uses mechanics from Pogo Stuck, but translated into 3D. And it takes place in a floating environment like Only Up. Your only objective is to get to the top. I started by creating the main character. I found a human body model on Turbo Squid that looked pretty good. The only problem is he's kinda naked. Let's get him some clothes. I gave him a cyclist outfit, a goatee, and a gold earring. Let's call him Jim. Jim. You may be wondering, where are his shoes? Uh, I forgot. <laughs> Hopefully there's no broken glass. Next, I modeled his primary weapon, the pogo stick. I created the animation of him jumping up and down, which is literally just two keyframes, and I switched back and forth between them in Unity's animated. Looks good. Now we have our main man. We're ready to start programming. I spent a few days getting the controls working, and after a while, this is what I got. You can jump up here, jump off the walls, and the most important mechanic of all, if you fall from a high height, you can do a supercharge and get all the way back up. All your speed is perfectly stored. Doesn't matter how high you fall from, you can always get all the way back up. Perfect, everything feels good. Oh yeah, and I also added Ragdoll. Why? Because it's hilarious! It did create one small issue though. How do you get back up from the Ragdoll onto the pogo stick? First he gets up, he runs over to where the pogo stick is using an advanced pathfinding algorithm, he bends down, picks up the pogo stick, gets back onto it. Let's start with the ragdoll get up animation. There's gotta be a faster way to do this. Next, the sound effects. Pogo stick jumping effect, bang. Charge up sound effect, bang, bang. Bang! There's one more. Time for a game. Who's that sound effect? I found a way to sneak this obnoxious sound into my game, but not in its raw form. I had to cut it down and fade it in a way that was a little bit less abrasive. And where does it play? Meme perfection. Now the camera. A lot of 3D games struggle with the camera, but I think I know why. They try to prevent the camera from clipping into solid objects, and then they add some weird jerky behavior. So I decided to just allow the camera to clip into the walls for simplicity. Alright, so the mechanics are done. Let's move on to something else. I'm getting sick of this checkerboard test map, so let's get started with the level design. I found a great asset on Turbo Squid called Low Poly Megapolis for only $15. I thought it would work well as the building blocks for the city. Also, it saves a ton of work. If you're working by yourself, highly recommend you buy some packs. Or, in the case of only up, just steal everything. It took a few days, and slowly but surely, the town approached its final shape. One thing I didn't like was the fact that you can just kind of look out into the infinite void of the skybox. To fix this, I created multiple walls of trees and mountains, which I made by taking pictures of trees, fill bucketing it green, and literally drawing the mountains with a paintbrush tool. It made such a big difference. It really feels like you're in a place and not just nowhere. Now we need to add some people to call this place home. Rather than make a whole variety of people, I just duplicated the main character and gave him some different clothes. Then I created a walk animation and had him follow various paths around the town. Not bad, buddy. Everybody still looks kind of the same. Uh, also, there's no women or anybody who's not 25 years old and ripped. Nah, whatever. It's fine. Also, I just realized that just like the main character, nobody has any shoes on. Hope there's no broken glass or anything on the ground. These pedestrians look okay, but they're still pretty boring since they don't interact with anything or anyone. So I gave them all random phone conversations. For example, you want to go? Kind of they're singing some kind of like old Jewish music. Sounds pretty fun. I might want to go. And then I made them ragdoll too. Now the roads. I found a free car model on Turbo Squid, plopped it in there, and just like the pedestrians, had it follow set paths throughout the town. These cars over here just drive infinitely in circles. They're on a loop. They go around the block. They come back. They go around again. They just go around and around. Now we just need a driver. There we go. Same exact man driving every car. People don't look in them anyway, right? Normally in the real world, if you hit someone with a car, the car stops, the guy gets out, and they call an ambulance, and then they check the insurance, blah blah blah. Not in this town. They just plow you down and keep going. They don't give a shit. Now that the town is filled with lovely people, it's time to add some music. At first I struggled to find a song that fit the vibe of the game. That's because the game's vibe is very context dependent. For example, if you're just pogoing on the ground level, the vibe is kind of like... But if you're going for a precarious jump, it's kind of more like... 
I talked this problem over with my friend, and he came up with a really great idea. This place is a city, right? Well, in New York, there's always people just playing random things throughout the town. So what if you copied that? I scattered several musicians around the town, and they do a fine job filling the air. And as a bonus, they're like helpful markers that prevent you from getting lost. And then I made them ragdoll. I created one more musician who plays this loop. I even animated the snare drum, the hi-hat, and the kick all on the beat. Um, excuse me, hello? According to the five-piece drum standard setup chart, that drum is actually the floor tom and not the snare drum, so it's not 100% technically accurate. <laughs> anyway. Next, I added some variation in the time of day and weather, and made it so that way it changes when you reach certain parts of the map. When you finally get to the top of the tallest skyscraper, night falls, and the game takes on a whole new personality. I was so hyped by the vibe here that I just had to make a song for this section. Oh man, I love the way that came out. I know that makes me sound like an arrogant soul, but fuck you, I like it. Let's move on to the ending. I wanted to use Morgan Freeman's God voice, but Voiceify was trying to charge me $7 to use it, so I came up with an alternative that may even be better. I went to a free text-to-speech website called Narakeet, and I used audio editing magic to convert this Well done student, you have completed my challenge into a God voice. Well done student, you have completed my challenge. Oh my god, that will definitely catch people off guard. So with all that, I finished the main game. I just had to add some other supporting stuff, like I filled the map with 100 purple crystal collectibles, I added a main menu, file system with save and load, audio controls, a force field to make sure you don't go out of bounds, snuck in some easter eggs, and control hint pop-ups. Now it's time for playtests. Right out of the gate, almost every player went the wrong way and got lost. Despite the huge up arrow, everyone got distracted by the purple crystal on the museum steps. They went to collect it, and then they went this way or that way and didn't know where to go. To fix this, I added a signboard to hide the crystal on the steps, and I placed a few more to clearly mark out the main path. To really make it clear, I added a feature where if you press up on the D-pad, a little Tinkerbell sparkle will appear, and it shows you which way to go. Another thing I noticed is that most people were absolutely struggling to clear jumps. I know that's the point of these games, but it was kind of hard to watch, especially if they fell and lost all their progress, so I added checkpoints that we have to constantly restart and climb up if you don't want to. But don't worry, I made it so that way this feature can be turned off for those who want the authentic, challenging experience. It did have one small problem though, where some of the checkpoints on the lower parts of the path would lure people away from the main one. So to fix that, all I had to do was put them out of view. Last thing is the branding. Math is... All right. That's all I got. If you want to give it a try, links are in the description. I'll see you in the next one.